All right, welcome to Frank Teaches Devils. Um, in today's um, episode, in today's episode, we shall be looking at um, Docker images. Your first touch, your first touch to Docker images. Your first touch to Docker images. All right. So. Um, in here, we shall, this is what we shall be treating. We shall be looking at the Docker official images. All right. I will say, what is a, in quotes, official, official Docker image? What is it? What is it all about? Why? Then two, we shall look at um, where where are our images stored? Right? Where are our images stored locally? Locally. And finally, for the series, we shall look at creating creating our first container creating our first container so this is what we have in this uh, episode okay all right so now let's start with what official docker image so now if you can see if i go to um google Google is your friend. If I go to Google and if I hit Docker, now before I go ahead, <clears throat> let me explain. Every product owner, most of the product owner has, <clears throat> has images of their products on Docker Hub. All right. Docker Hub is where all the images pertaining to Docker is stored. Docker Hub, let's see what we call about. What, what is Docker Hub? What is uh, Docker, Docker Hub? Now, it's where all your images are stored. Now, um, okay. From Wikipedia, Docker Hub is the world's largest library and community for container images. Okay, now Docker Hub is a service provided by Docker for finding and sharing container images with your team. Finding and sharing container images with your team. It is the world's largest repository of what? Container images. That is Docker Hub. And on Docker Hub, Product applications developers, applications owners, they have their official images, all right, hosted on Docker Hub. Now, let's say, for instance, I have um, Nginx, okay? I want to see the official image of, um, of Nginx. This is what I will do. I will go on, Do uh, on Google and I will type Docker, sorry, Docker Nginx. I will hit enter. Now look at, can you see now? Nginx official image. Now I'll go on that URL and let's see the official image of Nginx. Now this is the official image. Can you see the, uh, the logo here? The emblem, official image. So this is Nginx official image. It's called official build of what? Of Nginx. All right. Now, if I want to download this image, this is what Docker said I should do. Docker pull engineers. So the pull command, starting with the pull command. Let's start with the pull. Docker pull was the useful. This command is used to download images to your 
local machine. Okay? The Docker Pool command is used to download images to your what? local machine. That is what Docker Pool does. And let's go back to our, our official documents. It says if we run Docker Pool, the image name, the official image name, I'm going to have that in my local machine. All right, now let's do something. Let me bring up my terminal. So this is my terminal. So if they say, if I do Docker pool ng work nginx. Now this image is being downloaded. Downloaded, it's already downloaded. Okay, great. Now, let's go down a bit. Let's go down a bit and see. Quick references. Now they, they have every image has what we call tags. Tags is tag. Tagging is a kind of identifier. Let's 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 see that on our blackboard. Let's see that. Let's see that. Tag. Tagging is a kind of identifier. Okay? Meaning, uh, this. Meaning, Every image has a tag, has a tag. Now, look at what, what we did. I did Docker pool Nginx. So Nginx is the official name of what? Nginx, of the image, Nginx. Now, without specifying any tag, by default, I'm going to download the latest version of that image. It's going to download the latest version of the image. Now let's go back to the website. Now this is what we have. We have these versions. 1.21, mainline 1, 1.21.6, and the latest. Let's assume I, I want to download 1.20. So this is what I will do. I will come back and I will say Docker pool engines nginx column 1.20. Let's not, let's see what will happen. Enter. Can you see? Now, once it finished downloading, it says that it says that downloaded new image for what nginx. Can you see the labeling? 1.20. So tagging is a way of labeling, identifying a resource, okay? Now, let me take us back to this uh, part. Already exists. So these are different layers. If you, if you still remember in our last episode, episode one of um, introduction, where we talked about um, layering in Docker, Docker layering, you can see that this image, this image has several layers. And the first layer of this image, we've already downloaded that image. That's why it's telling us that this layer, this layer you're seeing already what exists. Let me take us back to, um, to that layering. Let me say Google, um, Docker layering. So, so, so that we can see what I talked about in my previous video image. So this is the concept of Docker layering. Let me let me let me come here. So here's the concept of Docker, Docker layering. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's from Docker itself. Okay, all right, great. Now look at this. Now this image is Ubuntu Ubuntu fifteen point zero four, and these are the different layers in that image. These layers are processes. They are processes on that image. All right. So now let's look for Ubuntu fifteen. Point zero four, the official documents. So this is what I will do. I will come here. I will say Docker Ubuntu. 
I'll click on the same link that will take me to Docker official image for Ubuntu. Uh, let me let me go back, please. Let me go, let's go back. This is how to install Docker. Now here is it. Ubuntu official image. Here is it. Okay. Now this is the whole gist. All right. So if I come back to my terminal and I say Docker, Docker pull Ubuntu, it's going to pull download for me the latest version of what Ubuntu. Now, can you see now? It's being tagged Ubuntu. Now, if I go back and look for, do we still have 15.04? No, you don't have that anymore. So let me take 16.04 as my tag. I'll come here and I'll say, um, Docker pool Ubuntu colon 16.04. Let us see. So you can see, okay, in this image, um no layer already exists now let's look for a smaller version of um ubuntu let me say um bionic this bionic this is what i want bionic oh sorry okay let me just say bionic ubuntu bionic so if i say docker pool Ubuntu column bio need. Now let's see. All right. I need to catch that, that header. Let's look for, um, okay, let's look for Zenel. Let's look for Zenel. Zenel. Docker, I just want to show something. Docker pool Zenel. Uh, pull access denied. Oh, sorry. Docker pull uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu column Zenel. All right. It's supposed to show us already exists. All right, but that's fine. That's fine. Now, if I pull version 18, Docker pull Ubuntu 18.04. Um, is there already? Okay, okay, that's fine. So this is how you pull the official image of um of 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 Docker. All right, uh, official image of a product owner, Ubuntu. Okay, so that's that. That's that. Then we are done with um official Docker images. So now let's see where are these images stored locally. Where are they stored on our base machine? So let's see. So there's a command called Docker images. So Docker images, Docker images will show us all the images that we have downloaded in our environment. So if I hit enter, you're going to see the whole images I downloaded. The first one was the latest. Uh, 18.04 Bionic 1.20 latest again for uh, Nginx Ubuntu 16.04 and Ubuntu Xenia version. Okay, so Docker images. So these are how our images are stored locally. So let's come back to our notes. Let's come back to our notes. Let's do our notes. So Docker. This command is used to lift the downloaded images locally. This command is used to list the downloaded images locally. The images we've downloaded, this command is used to list them. Now, there's something called Docker search as a bonus. Let me target bonus, bonus, Docker search. Sorry. Docker search, then the image name. Let's say, here's the syntax Docker search image underscore name. Now, Docker search is used for searching for an image. Now, this command 
is used for man is used to stretch for an image on docker hall all right so instead of me to go on a, a google and type docker apache enter docker apache yes or virtual image if i right click i say open new tab apache all right i'll just search for it so they are saying apache docker pull httpd so what i will do i'll just search for what httpd this is what i will do clean my screen i'll say docker search httpd enter so it's going to show me all the images of apache on docker hall this is the beauty of docker all right so now here is the latest version the this is the official version the apache http server projects here was it so these are different images all right built by different people okay and pushed towards docker hub but the official image of apache is httpd all right so we'll just see how we can use um we could use docker search to search for an image so uh, here comes uh, the command uh docker search get the image name httpd all right so uh quickly back to um um our task for today uh, number two which is where are our images stored locally so with docker images we can see all our stored images okay now assuming i don't want these images anymore i want to delete them okay so there's a command called docker rmi then the image id or image name image id or image name so let's start with what we need image id now i want to delete um uh 18.04 with the image id so i'll say docker docker rmi minus the image id copy that paste it enter now it's saying that unable to delete this image must be forced image is referenced in multiple repositories so 1804 is referenced because we have it here we have it here we also have it here and we have it here we have some layers all right it's not talking about the layering now we have different layers so it's conflicting so you cannot so to forcefully delete this image we say docker rmi minus f and the image id name that's the image id name now hit enter you will see that on that it was able to delete two images both 1804 and bionic let's check so if i say docker images let's check you can see that 1804 has been deleted and bionic has also been deleted so docker rm the image name or the id image id name image id deletes an image so let's come back here let's come back to our board let's come back to our board docker rmi then image id paste this command is used to delete an image now there's a situation where um the image is being referenced in other images all right and it's refusing to delete as the case we we had here as a case we had here all right so this is what you do this is what you do so this is what you do 
you say Docker RMI minus F. So forcefully, you are deleting that image. So this command is used to forcefully delete an image. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now I think that is all about um Docker. Um, um that's all about um where our uh, images are stored locally. What if what if what if I needed to delete all of these images automatically? Now I have let's say I have n number of images, Docker full HTTPD. Let me put more images. Let me put more Docker full my SQL. Let me pull, let me pull, let me pull. Okay. I want to show something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, now I said Docker, I have enough images now. I have enough images. Now, I want to delete all of these images at once. How to delete these images at once? Here is the command. So I'll say Docker, R-O-M-I, okay? Dollar, bracket open, Docker, minus A, minus Q. But before I do this, let me show us something. If I say Docker, Images is going to display the full details of the image. But if I say Docker images minus Q, let's see what minus A does. Okay, minus A also displays all the images, right? All the images. Now, let's say Docker images. I don't want to display all the image details what i want to display is just the image id image id i'll say q q will display for me the image id all right let's come back to our notes let's come back to our notes so docker images minus q so this command this command with flag with flag Q is used to display image ID only. All right. It's used to display image ID only, as we, we've seen here. So now I want to delete all of these automatically. So this is what I will do. So Docker RMI dollar brackets open Docker. Now, now specify the full Docker command. All right, Docker. All right, images minus Q. This command is going to delete all of these images. Enter. I see, but there's conflict because some images are referenced to other images. Now let's see that Docker images. I've been able to delete. All of those images we had before, can you see them? They've all gone, but there are two that have been referenced to each other. So it requires us to forcefully delete them. So what I would do, I would say Docker RMI minus F dollar brackets Docker images minus Q bracket close. So with this command, I should be able to delete forcefully delete those images now if i say docker images i am left with nothing so take note of this command take notes take note of this so let's come our uh, blackboard so docker images sorry docker rmi rmi aru aru mi okay um dollar brackets docker docker images uh-huh minus q so this command this command automatically delete 
delete all images at at once. All images at once. It deletes all images at once. Okay, it deletes all images at once. What is this? Okay, it deletes all images at once. Okay, okay, great, great. So I think that's that's that uh, as regards um, as regards our topic. Uh, where are our images stored locally? Then we move to the last um, the last topic for the day, which is creating our first container. Okay, so creating our first container. So what I will do now is I'm going to um, download um, the Nginx container one more time. I don't have anything uh, locally, so I'll say Docker. Docker what? Docker pool. Ng Nginx. So this is going to download the Nginx image. So from this image, I want to create a container. So I say Docker images. I just have this, right? I just have this. So this is what I will do. This is how we create a container. Docker run. So Docker run is a command that is used to create a container. So if I say docker run minus D, and this D means that I want to run this container in the background, in the background, which is called in a detachable mode, detachable, detach, detachable mode, all right? So in a detachable mode, I use D, okay? Docker run minus D, the image name, Image name is what? Nginx. Nginx. So if I hit enter, it's created. Now, if I say Docker PS, it will tell me that I have a running container. So let me explain this command one more time. So to create Docker run minus the image name ng next. So this command is used to create a container. Don't worry, this is just um introduction to containers. All right. So when we get into uh, a full chapter on container, we shall see much more commands, much more commands on how to interact to create that's i call that, that i call the chapter container deep dive container deep dive when we get to the chapter of container you will see what we'll do with docker run and how we can manipulate containers okay but this just take it as it is now this is intro to container right creating container so docker run minus d the image name this command is used to create a container now you know very well that Nginx is a web server. Nginx is a web server. And as this is now, I have not assigned any port number, any port to access this web server. So meaning I cannot, I will not be able to access this my Nginx server on the internet, on the internet. This is my Nginx container on the internet. So there is another way we can create this Nginx container and assign a port, assign a port to this Nginx container so that I will be able to access this Nginx container on my web browser. So this is how I will do it, okay? So now I'm going to delete this container. So if I do Docker PS, Docker PS, another command under containers, Docker PS, this command is used to display running containers. We have another one, docker ps minus a. This command will 
D. A flag is used to display posts running and exited containers. Posts running and exited containers. Now, let me stop this container and see. If I say Docker, stop. Container ID. Stop. Now, if I say Docker PS, I won't see that container. I won't see the container, the running container, because the container has been stopped. But if I do Docker PS minus A, I should see both running and exited containers. So that is the difference. So let's see now. We've run, we've talked about another command, Docker stop. Now let's go back um, to our whiteboard. So Docker stop, then container ID, container ID. All right. So this command is used to stop a running container. Okay. Now I have to start a running container. I say Docker starts container underscore ID. This command is used to start a stop container. Now let's start that container now. Let's see. Docker PS minus A. Where's the container? This is engineers, right? So here is the ID. I've copied it. So Docker starts the ID name. Started. So if I say Docker PS, it will tell me that my container is back running. What if I don't want this container anymore? I want to delete this container. So I'll say what? Docker RM. Take note. Docker RMI is used to delete an image. The Docker RM, then the container ID is used to delete a container. Now, here is the container ID. If I hit enter, I'm going to get an error. Now, this error says that you cannot remove a running container. Here is it. You cannot delete a running container. So mean that I may have to stop it first before I delete it. Now, but what if I want to forcefully delete the running container? This is what I will do. I'll say docker rm minus f. I'm going to use the word minus f flag, then paste the container ID. If I hit enter, the container is gone. So if I say docker ps, everything is gone. It's gone. So let's see this other command. The last command for container. Docker rm minus f container id. This command is used to port fully delete a running container. Okay, that's it. Now, I want to, to wrap this video up. To wrap this video up, we want to uh, run our Nginx server and see how we can access our Nginx server on the web browser. So this is what I will do. I'll say docker run minus B. I told us earlier minus B is to run the, this uh, to run the container in the background, detachable mode. Minus D. Now I'm introducing a new flag called minus P. Minus P. Minus P means port. Now I'm going to run this container on port 1990. Then I'm going to map. This is my external port where I'm going to run this container on with the internal port which the container uses to run. So the internal port is port 80. 
and the image name ending it. That is all. Let me terminate. Let me terminate. Let me explain now. Now, 1919 is external ports. It's external ports. Okay, let me let me do it here. Let me do it on my on my dash blackboard. Let's do it on a dashboard. Okay. Um, all right. Docker run minus D minus P 1990 column 18. Image name nginx. Okay. Engines. Now let's explain. Let's explain. Uh 1990. This is external port number. External port number. Okay. This port number is used to accept the engine web server externally on the internet. Right? To access the engine container, I use that port 1990. Now, port 80 is internal port number. This this port number is used by the container internally. So the engine container uses port 80 internally. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to map, do a mapping. So you can call it port forwarding. Yeah, you can call it, you can call it, you can call, you can call the uh, concept port forwarding because I am mapping what I have look uh, externally to what I have internally. So let's see how that works. Okay, so I'm going to now say Docker Docker run minus D minus P 1990 column 80, then the image name ng mix. So if I hit enter, great. So now if I say Docker PS, I should have a running container with an assigned port number. Can you see? Can you see people? So now with this 1990, I should be able to access my Nginx server on the browser. So let's go. Let me go and pick the public IP of my uh, instance. Docker. Uh, here's a public IP. Copy. Let me close some of these pages. Close, close, uh, close. All right, let's use here. I will paste it. I'll say column 1990. All right, it's taking time to come out because the port is not open on the firewall. So this is what I will do. I'll go back to um, my um, AWS um, tenant. I'll go to security and I'll open my security group um then i will set my inbound rules then i will open the ports add the rule i'll open it's a custom rule custom tcp 1990 um anywhere that's it i'll say save rules save so if i come back here and refresh i should have my nginx web server this is my nginx web server so this is it. so this is how you assign a port to your running container so that you'll be able to access it on the browser so if i come back here and kill the container i say docker rmi sorry docker rm forcefully because the container is still running copy the container id paste it and hit enter it's dead if i come back i refresh I refresh, the page is gone, the page is gone. So if I come back here and also recreate it, recreate it, my page should be back up. My Nginx web server should be back up. So that is, this brings us to the end of this episode. This brings us to the end of this episode. So take this, yes, I'll take home. We looked at Docker images, your first touch. All right, so what is an official Docker image? And we went further to look at where 
our, our images stored locally. Then we went further to see how we can create our first container. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Please kindly like and share. All right. Thank you. And um, have a wonderful weekend.